carbon fiber chassis, which is a rare thing in a vehicle of this price point. It's fast. Whoa. Hello folks, welcome to the NetCruiser RC. New RC unboxing today. I'm at the cottage actually, but uh, some stuff came in and if I don't do a videos on it, I'm gonna fall really behind. I'm gonna check out the new Rolarlo buggy. So this is the Rolarlo 114th scale brushless buggy and uh, I'm excited to try it out. It's a fairly low cost option. Um, the pricing is under $200 US. At the time that this is hitting the market, they're kind of doing a social media blast off and they have some deals on. So certainly check out the links that I put in the description of the video. Try and get a deal on this. If you're one of the first 200 people that buy it, there is a discount as well as I may have additional discount codes in the video description where you can get a deal on it. We're going to open up the box and check it out and see what it's like. There has been quite a few videos made on this over the past few weeks as they are doing a social media blitz to try and get this new buggy out on the market. So. I haven't watched anyone else's videos on it. So this is gonna be my initial take on it. 114th scale four wheel drive racing model series. Now, this is not a you know competition class buggy by any means. This is a you know get started with buggies and uh, try and decide if you like RC cars. Oh, you get quite a few parts, accessories. You do get a battery with it. We'll go through some of that. So as far as I know, out of the box, the only thing that you need to add to make this fully ready to run is three AA batteries, which I do have ready to go for the transmitter. You do have to provide your own AA's, but beyond that, everything should be included. Let's take a look at the radio. It's already interesting that it has a purple wheel. That's kind of fun. It looks like a pretty good design radio. It actually has the same shape as a Noble NB4 with the square top and square bottom. I think they went, yeah, they went for uh, the look of a Noble NB4, which is very interesting. Certainly doesn't have the features of a Noble, but looks like one. Driving tips for beginners, dr throttle trim, steering rate trim, dual trim, how to run a radio. This is all good stuff. Throttle trim, steering rate, steering trim, reverse for steering, all the ba just the basics. You do not have a dual rate though. Uh, you have a throttle rate, which is your endpoint adjustment. The other two are trims. That's all we have for adjustments. On here, tips for beginners. Working. I mean, it feels low end, but it has all the basics. It is a fully proportional system with trim, so it'll do the basics. Buggy, and I'll just get it out of the box here. All right, it's weighty, a uh, big nylon wing. Whoa, big nylon wing, big rear bumper, wheelie bar. I think this is gonna be fast. It has something like a 3200 kV brushless motor on it. And this is the all carbon fiber version. So let's get some of these body clips off and take a look at all the carbon. You can get this in a metal version or carbon fiber, and this is the carbon fiber. If you get the metal one, I believe it's a red shell. The purple is the carbon, which is nice. It does have the peel, so make sure you always remember to peel off the outside film. There we go. Nice. And here is the inside of the Rolarlo. Similar layout to what I've had on one of the other WL Toys vehicles that I've reviewed previously. So ESC is actually sitting up on top, so it'll be fairly high, but the battery will go down here underneath. Nice little brushless motor. Looks like a castle, but I don't believe it is. It's because it's a no-name. Aluminum motor mount. Here you have carbon fiber front shock tower, carbon fiber rear shock tower carbon fiber chassis, which is a rare thing in a vehicle of this price point. Even curves. So they put some effort into the moldings. It does have a slight kick up on the front and a slight kick up on the rear, which is a little weird. You normally don't have a kick up on the rear, only kick up on the front, but this has a, seems like a fairly symmetrical kick going on. 
shocks. Shocks are fully aluminum. They do feel like they're oil dampened. Uh, I would have to open them up to confirm exactly, but yeah, I do think there's some very light oil in them. If not, they're very smooth. This does appear to be a receiver speed control all-in-one combo. Nice thing is the servo looks to be a standard servo lead, so if you do end up changing this out, you can still keep the servo, and then you would just need a receiver and a speed control to, uh, to upgrade. The front steering system is a double bell crank with a saver built in, so it looks a little loose right now. You could tighten up that little thumb screw down underneath where you can see that coil spring, and that will tighten up your steering. Um, but just be aware that the tighter you run it, the more you risk of damaging this no-name servo and it literally has no specs and no sticker on it at all. Dog bones are metal which is great and uh, it is a CVD which is great in the front so that means it's not going to pop out because it's a captured design and on the rear the rear is a dog bone and all the hardware is Phillips head star head screws. All right let's take a look at what comes in the accessory kit and the documentation. Still just going over the uh, equipment that you get with this. Here's the instruction manual. Look at this, supports 3S. So we will try that in a later video is on 3S. But for now, what we will just run it on is the included 2S battery. So it comes with a 2S hard case. I think it's around 2,800 milliamp hour. Is it? Oh, I was exactly correct. 2,800 milliamp hour, uh, 7.4 volt, generic LiPo, cute little LiPo. Um, with a Dean's connector and a USB charger. Now this USB charger charges over the balance lead connection off of any USB power source, probably two amp or higher, and it will take four to five hours to recharge this. If you have a hobby charger, certainly do that instead because you'll be able to charge it up in 20 minutes instead of five hours. That makes a humongous difference if you have the ability uh, to use a better charger than what comes with. Yes, the USB charger that it comes with requires a two amp input and the output will be 7.4 volts at 1.3 amp, which is, uh, that's not too bad. That's around 0.5 of a C. Normally you wanna try and charge batteries at one C. So typically if I was gonna charge this on a hobby charger, I would charge it around 2.8 amp. And uh, if you're gonna charge it with this, it charges at up to 1.3 amps. So it's not terrible. Uh, certainly it's better than I thought it would be for charge speed being over one amp but uh, certainly a hobby charger is a better idea if you, uh, if you have one. The documentation seems pretty good. It goes through all of the initial setup about how to install batteries in the radio for a you know, basic, if you've never had an RC car before, it walks through what all of those knobs and adjustments do on the radio, how to drive it, how to control it, how to open the body, how to connect and power it on properly, and then we have exploded parts diagrams. Now, while I appreciate that they have full instructions here about how to build the buggy for servicing, what I don't see in here is any part numbers. So, uh, also, it looks like there are no foams in these tires. Yes, that's correct. They're just open air, but pretty nice tread, actually. The tread is grippy, and the compound is soft. It's just that there's no foams in them, which is unfortunate. It would have been nice to have that little bit extra um, they seem fairly well glued. The wheel seems fairly strong, like the wheel itself. The, the flexing is happening through all of the plastics in the hubs. Part support, exploded parts diagrams are all here, but there's no part numbers. Even when you get past the exploded parts diagram, the parts are listed by name, not by part number. So. Hopefully Rilarlo does support this for parts going forward. And if you do want to try and find parts for it, here's who manufactures it. So we'll try and find out if Rilarlo does a pretty good job at providing support and parts for this in the future. For now, they're just coming up with these new cars and uh, hopefully they support them well. Some of the interesting things that you get with it is you get all new A-arms. So if you break an arm, you don't have to worry about placing the part, they give you new arms, front, rear. They give you hinge pins, which is great. Check this out. They give you spare axles, one spare axle, one spare CVD front, one dog bone rear, one hub. You get some tools, you get a T-wrench for wheels, you get extra body clips, you get a screwdriver for tightening down the Phillips head screws. 
additional wheel hexes. And what are these? These are washers for the wheel nuts and the wheel hexes. And then your battery. And this one, if this is the one of the first cars you've ever bought, you're probably gonna hit things. And a buggy has a fairly small bumper on the front, but what they do is they give you a giant bumper. So if you are not confident in your driving skills and you wanna be able to uh, hit things or just not worry about it, here's instructions and provided a big front bumper. Now I am certainly not gonna put this on, but if you need it, this is what it looks like and this is how you do it. So that's a neat little option as well. Beginners are required to assemble the upgraded bumper before driving to avoid serious damage. So interesting, they expect this to be purchased by beginners and if you think you're gonna hit things, put the bumper on. All right, so that accessory kit is all included and uh, as you purchase this in the future, you may be able to find bundles where you get more than one battery with it. I'm gonna put the battery in and, uh, and try it out. Dampening seems pretty good. Yeah, definitely oil filled. So usually a vehicle of this price point does not get oil filled shocks, does not have a brushless motor system, and does not have carbon fiber. So uh, all good things. I'm actually gonna do what a child would do, which is be you've just purchased this vehicle and you're not gonna wait to charge it, you just wanna run it right away. So we're gonna put the battery in. This should be in a storage charge level right now. So we're gonna put it in and use it. All right, here's a slightly better shot of it. I'm curious how coggy it's going to be because this is an uncensored system uh, on a you know no-name 45 amp ESC. We'll see, but overall, build seems decent for sure. I like that it's got that bit rear bumper and wheelie bar too. That's pretty fun. Always turn the radio on first on a car. Power button is this little center one right here. Fan immediately spinning, check, check the steering. It's a little bit overdriven, but the servo saver is taking care of it and it's not screaming. And if I look at the dials here, steering rate is maxed out. So I can probably turn down steering rate a bit, turn that down even more. Yeah, that's better. So now I'm not overdriving it anymore. When it comes out of the box, it's cranked. Turn down steering rate at about three quarters of a percent. And the rest of the stuff seems okay. And reverse. That's good, there's no cogging. Seems to be very soft initial throttle pull. I'm surprised there's no cogging. Wow, slow speed response seems good. All right, let's put the body on, take it outside. You go to put the body on, uh, it kind of, it hits the wires and the fan, so it's gonna make noise. Yeah, it's always gonna be humming away like that. It's just there's not enough clearance because the speed control and everything's touching the top of the body. It fits, but just barely. All right, here we go. First drive with the Rolarlo buggy. It's like slow speed response is surprisingly good for being brushless. That's great. And yet it still has lots of power. Seems to have good speed. Whoa, it's a little squirrely, but I'm also on very rough terrain. So let's get out here. Let's get out here where it's a little bit more smooth. And go take it for a little run down the road here. It's fast. It's really fast for being on 2S. Whoa. Yeah, that's a fast car. And slow speed response is great. <laughs> Crash.
We have our first couple of scratches on the carbon, but that's to be expected. You certainly are going to get it scuffed up, but uh, overall that rear bumper is very big. There's not going to be too much that hurts the rear. <laughs> I mean, overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. Every little bump kind of throws it off a little bit because it's so small, but loose dirt. So if you go reverse and then immediately hit throttle, it waits a second. So it's, I mean, it's, it's good for not breaking parts that way. Uh, should be okay for a beginner as well. Loves this loose sandy stuff. It's a big benefit of it being four wheel drive and having oil shocks is that it's handling is better than most cars in this price class. All right. I'd say that's a pretty good value for money here with the Rolar Lowe's. So if you're interested in a little buggy like this where you just want to have some fun in your backyard or around where you're not seriously needing something that's like a race spec quality, something that's small, something you could give to your kids, you can also dial down that throttle so that it's not so manic because uh, this does seem really almost too speedy on 2S. I can't wait to try it on 3. It's going to be absolutely nuts on 3. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new on here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll probably make a follow-up video of this running it on 3S, and uh, we'll see how it holds up to that. All right, thanks for watching. Links in the description if you want one of these. It's the Rolarlo.